kings The supreme when love is the thing The hurt and the tears from the pain he endeared That none of the sun should ever come and be feared who wanna fellowship the top the ministry? Who wanna get the word? Take it from the top of wanna get their praise on? Can we take it from the top, top of my ministry? ministry? Coming at you live, we provide all that. Come on. Can we take it from the top of my ministry? Can we take it from the top of my ministry? Can we take it from the top of my ministry? Now let me take it from the top of my ministry. Lord, everyone, welcome to Top of the Mountain Christian Ministries. <laughs> well. We want to get started here. Go ahead and take out your phones for me. Take out your phone. You know what we do when you take out your phones? We want you to text somebody. Let them know that you're in service at Top of the Mountain Christian Ministries and you're praying with them and for them. And I want you to mean it. I want you to mean it. Pick out somebody that, that you feel that the Lord really needs to touch right now. I've picked, I have chosen a few folks in, in my timeline or, or my contacts that I wanted to make sure that they got a word today. I want to make sure that my wife, my son, and my sister-in-law, uh, Misty, that, they, um, that I'm letting them know that I'm reaching out to them for prayer for traveling mercies as they're back on the highway headed home. Misty's headed home to her home, and then my son and my wife is headed back here to South Carolina. Yes, it's a little rough today with, without having them in service today, but it's okay. I will enjoy you. Amen. So go ahead and let them know. I'm going to give you a few moments to go ahead and text somebody that's just idly talking right now so that you, you can get them into your text this morning. Amen, amen. We're going to be going over, as you, as you text, I just want to let you know to go to Genesis chapter 15. But before you go to Genesis 15, go to Exodus chapter 3, put your finger there, and then go back to Genesis 15. Yeah, we're going to, I'm going to do a quick recap. Since I didn't minister last week, I'm going to do a quick recap of um, two weeks ago what we uh, ministered and what we prayed about. So, everybody finished texting somebody? Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you right now for the opportunity to come boldly before your throne, Father God, the, the throne of grace, Lord God. We're praying, Father God, for individuals that, that you've placed on our heart to reach out for in the text messages, Lord God. We pray that this message touched them in, in a time that they, they needed to hear from you, Lord God, a word of truth from you, Father God. And as they receive that word, Lord God, we pray that they even chime in on Facebook Live, Lord God. If, if they can't chime in on Facebook Live, Lord God, we pray that they have an opportunity to come to us, Lord God, in our service, Lord God. Uh, Genesis 15. First, and then Exodus chapter 3. So if you want to go to Exodus 3, put your finger there and go back to Genesis 15. And we had left off praying for everybody, and I was praying for traveling mercy for my wife and my son as they traveled back, and I was praying for my sister-in-law as uh, she travels back home also. So we want traveling mercies for them, and we pray for everyone else that I text on my my text line to... to um, have God's favor show up in their lives, and we pray for healing mer mercies and virtue over their lives as well. So we thank you and praise you for that. And if you can't, if you log back in, if we got you back, please like and share. Tag somebody in your Facebook feed and invite them in. Let them know that you're in Top of the Mountain Christian Ministries and you enjoying the service. Or if you if you are enjoying the service, please like and share. Amen. Amen. So I said we're going to recap since I didn't minister last week and Pastor T had a wonderful word, but it was interesting as Pastor T's word went out and I, I continued to meditate on what God has gave me for part two of this. I looked over my notes and Pastor T was basically preaching everything that 
I'm coming back with you today to minister. So it was interesting, and it was just, it's just how God operates. He always confirms his word where in two and three. So he confirms his word, and I'm about to confirm what she ministered, and she, she's confirmed last week what I'm about to minister today or finish ministering today. If you didn't quite get it, go back and look at her word that's on our timeline, or you can go to our Facebook feed. So we, we really want to build that Facebook feed as well. So let me continue to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you right now for your word that's going to be going out, Lord God. We pray that the word touched the heart and the minds of your people, Lord God, that it would set the captives free, Lord God, it, and it will focus on a mindset in your people, Father God. As, as we touch that mindset, Lord, we pray that the mind will change, Lord God, and, and healing will come over your people, over your children, Lord God, and, and the process of healing will take place in those that's hurting, Lord God. Those that need to hear a word from you today, Father God, we pray that, that this is the word that they need to hear, Father God. And if it's not our word, that, that they will get it before the sun goes down today, Lord God, and, and that they will be able to change their life and change the process that they're going through, Lord God. Now, Father God, we pray that you continue to bless this ministry, Lord God. Enlarge our tent pegs, Lord God. Let let's what's in the dark be revealed to the light, Lord God. If we hid from anybody, shine the light on us, Lord God, so they can find us, Lord. And, Lord God, now we ask that you decrease me so that you may ever increase in this place, Lord. And we want to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, Lord God. That's due to you by your son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. And thank you, Lord God. As we go into the word, as we recap this word, I have to recap it from, from the scripture that you've given us, Lord God. Genesis chapter 15 verses 13 through 14 and the word says then he said to Abel know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs and will serve them and they will affect them for hundred years for four hundred years verse number 14 and also the nation who they serve I will judge Afterwards, they shall come out with great possessions. And if you have, if you have your Bible in, or, or your phone or whatever, what you read this, you need to underline or highlight that part that says, with great possessions. Exodus chapter 3, verse 19 and through 20. And it says, it reads as thus, But I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let them let you go. No, not even by a mighty hand. So I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with my wonders, which I will do in the midst. And after that, he will let you go. And then finally, Exodus chapter 3, verse 21, and it says, And I will give his people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall be when you go that you shall not go empty handed. And that's another promise from God. He said he, he's going to strike his hand. But when you go, he's going to also give you favor. But when you go, you should not go empty handed. And it, it, you just got to understand and put, put God's promises in perspective over your life so that you can highlight your life where God has put something into your hand. And, and it goes on to say in verse 22, and it says, but every woman shall ask of her neighbor. Namely, of her who dwells near her, articles of silver, articles of gold, and clothing, and you shall put them on your sons and your daughters. So you shall plunder the Egyptians. As we go on, as we continue this word, I just want you to understand that the Egyptians are still struggling from this plunder that they're that was over all these many years. They are still struggling from this. And God is still showing favor over his people. And he's still adding favor to their lives. So if I would endeavor to give God's word a title or this message a title, it says, we will come out. We will come out. And here's the, the other part that he asked. He added to it. He says, but how you come out is the question. So 
he's telling us that we're going to come out of the struggle. We're going to come out of the pandemic. We're going to, we're going to come out of the heartaches. We're going to come out of the hatred. We're going to come out of bitterness. We're going to come out of sadness. We're going to come out of depression. But here it is. Here's the qualifying key to it. How you come out is the question. How you come out. God made us a promise. He said we're going to come out. But see, this, your promise has to line up with the word of God. The, your promise has to line up to the way that God is speaking to you and how you receive God in your heart. So your question to yourself is, as I go through this pain, as I go through these trials, as I go through this tribulation, how will I come out? And I, and I pray that, that the word that God gives to us today will give you an answer, will give you something that, that will touch your heart. Watch this. Will touch a mindset that's inside of you. So what happens is I can never change anybody's mind. But what I do is I work on a mindset. And when you work on that mindset, when that mindset is, is, is touched, when that mindset is changed, that what changes a mind. So we got to quit trying to change people and work on the mindset of a person. So how do, we, how do we work on the mindset of a person? We give the unadulterated truth here in the word of God. We, get, we challenge them in the word of God. And let that word of God, watch this, let it soak into their spirit. Let the word of God water and saturate their, their, their innermost being. That's the spirit that dwells within inside of them. Let the spirit of God do that. Don't try to force anybody to, to, to change the way that they do things. Just work on the mindset of that individual. And as you work on that mindset, God will begin to, to fester or change in them. But you got to do all this in love and you got to do all this in sincereness. So where we continue to leave off, where we continue to left off was we were talking about, and, and get this, to, to, in order to understand your greatness, you're going to have to go through something. You're going to have to go through trials. You're going to have to go through tribulations. You're going to have to go through some heartaches. And I, I know, I told you uh, two weeks ago, don't nobody want to hear, Pastor, I don't want to hear that I got to go through it. I just want to hear how I can get a new house. I want to know how I can get a new car. I want to know how I can get money. I want to know how, 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 how money cometh. But if you want to be the greatness of God, you got to go through something. You're going to have to endure something. Trials and tribulations are going to come. The Bible says in, in um, 2 Timothy chapter 3, it says that, that we got to prepare and, and endure hardship as a good soldier. A good soldier. Let's, let's look at that in how it says in the Amplified what's going to take place. It says, take with me your sharp, it says, take with me your share of hardship. Oh, man. Just right there, I can stop. That, that sums up everything that I said uh, two weeks ago, and that sums up what I'm introducing to you now. It says, take with me your share of hardships. Can I, so, so what I'm telling you, the word is telling you that you're going to have to go through something. So you're going to have to have some trials. You're going to have to have some tribulations. Watch this. You're going to have some brothers and some sisters, and, and I'm talking about blood family members, that's going to hate you and that's going to doubt you and that's going to talk about you and, they, and they're going to die trotting you, they, and they're going to turn everything against you. But you got to understand, as the word says, once again, it says, take with me your share of hardships. Passing through the difficulties. Yeah. So look at it. the word even says that we're going to pass through difficulties. And, and what did I tell you earlier? How you, how you go through these difficulties is going to determine the, the outcome when the difficulties leave your life. It's going to determine how God is, is, is working in your life. And watch this. It's going to determine the favor that's upon you. So it continues, it says, it says hardships that passing through the difficulty which you are called to endure. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I, 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 once again, I can stop right there. In the Amplified Version, it says that you're called to endure this thing. You're called. Brother Harris, it, it, you, the word tells you, you are called to go through difficulties. 
See, one thing, God says that he, he's going to give us favor, and he said he's going to do this and all this and all this, but he never promises that it's going to be easy. He never promises that it's going to be easy. What he did promise is if you, if you endure, if you continue to stand strong, if you continue to stay faithful, that you will win, that you will come out as pure gold. But we, as soon as we get into a, a hard time, as soon as we get into difficulty, as, to, as soon as we get into a trial, as soon as a tribulation comes, we, the first thing, why me? Why do I got to go through this? Why, why is this t- happening to me? But let's go back to that word again. Let me read it in, in its entirety. It says, take with me your share of hardship, passing through the difficulties which you are called to endure, like a good soldier of Christ, Jesus. And here it goes in verse, in verse number four. It says, no soldier in active ser- service get entangled in the ordinary business affairs of civilian life. He avoids them so that he may please the one who enlisted him to serve. So who enlisted you to serve? Who enlisted you to, to, to be a child of God? God is calling you. God has enlisted you. So what he's, he's also promising us that we're going to go through something. And, and that, that it's going to come to us. But he's saying, I, I, I'm giving you a foreshadowing. I'm, I'm telling you that, watch it, he says that, that no trials or tribulation will come to you that, that, that he does not give you a way of escape of. That he, he also promises that he's going to give us a way out of it. He's letting us know that when it comes, if you read your word, if you pray, if you fast, I'm giving you a way of escape. I'm giving you a way out. He said, when you come to Bible study, when you, when you come to, to Sunday service, and when you pray, when you fast, I'm giving you the, your way of escape now. I'm letting you know. The Bible says that you suffer a while, that he will establish you and make you perfect. Did you not understand that? He said, I'm going to establish you, Sister Harris. And not only am I going to establish you, but I'm going to make you perfect. And I can hear the doubters now. Uh, Pastor Campbell just said he's going to make you, the word says that he's going to. God did say, he said, he, be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. But here you go. Ain't nobody perfect but Jesus. But why does the word say that be ye perfect as your father in heaven is? How do we become perfect? How how do we become perfect as men and women of God? We strive not to make the same mistake that we did yesterday. We strive not to make the same mistake that we made two minutes ago. We got to be able to, to overcome the small things that come in our life and not do the same thing. We don't continue to fall into sin. We don't continue to, to lie. We don't continue to backbite. We don't continue to do all those things. We make ourselves perfect by moving away from those things. That's how we become perfect in the Word. We strive to be perfect. We strive for that perfection. So I don't want nobody to miss that. So let's look at 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 through 11. Today is one of my my, my days that I'm going to give a lot of scripture. So I need you to follow with me. I need you to be with me. Because I I want to give you the remedy to show you how to move you into your greatness. I want everybody to have the opportunity to be greater. The greater. The, The greater that's in me. The greater that's in you. I want you to reach that. So let's look at 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 through 11. It says, be sober minded. No, let me go to another translation. He said, keep cool head. Keep a cool head. Keep keep calm. Keep cool. And and see, that's one of the things I got to do now. I always got to keep a cool head. I can't get I can't get frustrated. I can't I can't do a, a get hyperventilated because I understand how this vertical thing works in, in my body. So if if I get out of character, it, my my blood pressure starts to rise and, and all these things inside of my body starts to turn. So here come a vertical attack. So I got to keep a cool head. I got to stay focused focus on the word of God so I can be able to become greater. So it says, well, here it goes. It said, be cool. I mean, it says, keep a cool head. Stay alert. He, he's, he's, what, when you read that, it says, stay alert. He's giving you a warning. He's telling you to do something. Stay alert. And, and here's, 
Here's why he's telling you to be, stay alert. The devil is poised to pounce. The devil, any chance he gets, ladies and gentlemen, he's going to try to pounce on you. So God is saying, keep a cool head. Stay alert because your enemy, your adversary, the devil is after you. He's going to do any, whenever he has opportunity, hey, when you put your guard down, here he comes. He's going to jump on you. He's going to attack you. He says, the devil is poised to pounce. And, and let, let's go to another translation real quick. It says, it says, be sober. Be sober. I, I, I know. I know. Uh, Pastor, I, I, I like a little drink to heal my body. I, I, all it says is be sober. I didn't say nothing about your little drink to heal your body. It says be sober. So why does it say be sober? It, it says be sober so you can have your wits about you because decisions have to be made. And, and, and sometimes you won't have the opportunity to, to wait on it and get sober. It says be sober so that you can make that quick transition and be able to answer that question and, and make that decision that you got to make without a cloud, cloudy mind. That's why Pastor Campbell don't drink. It, it, it says kings and queens in literature. It just says kings. But I, I'll add the queens to it. It says kings and queens don't be given over to drunkenness. I consider my, I'm in the king's army, so I, I consider myself a king, a, a king, a, a child of the king. So I'm, I am royalty, so I have to have that sober mind and, and, and be able to give an answer or give an account at any given time. So be aware. Keep back to First Peter. I'm going back to, let's see. Keep a cool head. Stay alert. The devil is poised to pounce and would like nothing better than to catch you napping. Hmm. Hmm. Let that sink in for a moment. Catch you napping. Keep your guard up. You're not the only ones plunged into these hard times. See, see, and that, that's the thing. When you, as soon as you say, why me? It, it, the word right there tells you, you're not the only one going through something. And I'm guaranteed whatever you're going to, and I, I'm, make, I'm not making light or, or, or trying to, to minimize anything that anybody going to, but I guarantee you, whatever you're going through, you can find somebody else that's going through worse. That's going through worse. But it says, yeah, one's plunged into these hard times. It's the same with Christians all over the world. So keep a firm grip on the faith. Hey, do this for me. Look at it. Look at it. Hold your hand like this, and I'll close it. Keep a firm grip. On your faith. Because what's going to happen is at any moment time, it, it, you're going to have trials and tribulations and attacks. This is what the enemy, he wants to attack your faith. He want to knock you out of faith. He don't want you to, to walk in faith. He don't want you to believe in that word. He wants to knock you off, off the pedestal of faith. Yeah, so it goes on, keeps a firm grip on your faith. The suffering won't last forever. What did that just say? Come on now. It won't last forever. It won't be long before this generous God who has great plans for us in Christ. Eternal and glorious plans, they are. We'll, ha we'll have you put together and on your feet for good. He gets the last word. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And so my question to you now is, if you ever wonder who God was greatly going to bless, did you ever wonder that? And if you got a mirror, if, if you got something to show your reflection, you need to look at that. You are the one that God is going to greatly bless. You are the one. But I need to tell you a few things. But if you look at somebody, that is in that is in great that is being greatly persecuted. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you look at somebody that's been greatly persecuted, persecution always points to promotion. Think about that. 
So that, that, that person that, that, that you're looking down at, that, that person that you're talking about, that person that's going through something, the persecution that they're going through, if they stay faithful, if they keep a firm grip on their faith, if they don't waver in their belief system of God, if they, if they don't turn their back on God, then that persecution always points to promotion. So what are you saying to me, Pastor? What, I, what I'm trying to tell you, what I, what I want you to understand is, well, the question should be, had, who in here has been persecuted? Who in here has been going through something? Who, who in here that people look at you and, 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 and turn their nose up at you? Who, who in here that, that people talk about and, and they look at you and, and they, they judge you according to what you look at? Uh, they judge you according to your appearance. They judge you according to, to the people that you hang around with. See that... Uh, You need to know that rejection, betrayal, jealousy, and hatred that comes against the lives of a believer is nothing but a setup for God to move you in, into your grave. See, all that is is God setting you up. God is setting you up, uh, up so that you can move into it. And I, I know, Pastor, what are you talking about? I can hear that, and I'm glad you asked that question because I want to answer that question for you. Let's look at Genesis chapter 37 where we find a young boy by the name of Joseph. Joseph first dreams of greatness. Joseph said to his brothers, Joseph told his brothers about his dream of greatness. In chapter 39, Joseph it becomes a slave in Egypt in Genesis. Not only was he a slave, but, but in Genesis 37, I mean 38, 7 through 20, we, we find Joseph trying to get away from a she-devil. That she-devil was after Joseph. Because if you go back and look at Genesis 37, if you go back and look at Genesis 38, if you look at at Genesis 39, if you look at those, it, it talks about the struggle, the battle that Joseph went through. And it also tells you that Joseph was a good-looking lad. So what happened was, let me tell you, the, the, the enemy came up upon Joseph. He sent somebody to come upon Joseph because of his appeal. Can I tell you, when the anointing of God is on you, it looks good. It looks good. I, I look back and, and I want to tell you something that that's, that's should open the eyes of people. I don't care how you look. I don't care how you look. But if, when you have that anointing on your life, you look a hundred times better than you look in the natural. They see, a, they see the glory of God on you and they're attracted to it. So they want to tear it down. I told you they're coming after your faith. They, they're coming after your anointing. They're coming after the glory of God that's, that's upon your life. So we find out that this she-devil wants to attack Joseph because of his appeal, the anointing that's on his life. <laughs> Joseph ran out of his clothes trying to get away from that girl. Listen, to save his anointing, to save what God has placed in him. So what does that tell for you and I? Don't stay around that mess. You got to get away from it because it's, it's attacking your anointing. It's attacking your favor. And it's, it's after your faith. Get out when it attacks you. Get out. Move away from it. Get out of it. But the interesting thing about this thing is funny. Has anybody had your brothers or your sisters hate you? His brothers were eaten up with jealousy, with the favor that was over his life. Not only did God shine favor, but his daddy found favor in Joseph. Daddy made him a coat of many colors and, and, and showed the shine, the favor on him. And this, after he done told the story, now the brothers want to get rid of him because now they're thinking that he's, he's saying that he's better than them. See, one thing I, I figured out and I, and I found out through this walk, 
when you speak the true word of God and when, when you stand on his promises, when you stand and say that I'm blessed and highly favored, people are going to come after you because they're thinking that, you, that you're talking about that you're better than anybody. No, what you're saying is I understand the God that's inside of me. I understand the power that dwells in me, and I understand that God's favor is upon my life. So I'm, I, hey, I'm talking about God. I'm not talking about myself. I'm, ta- I'm bragging on God for what he's doing. And, they, and everybody that is in your family isn't happy for your blessing. <laughs> that's, that's the sad part about it. But that's the reality. That's the truth of it. Everybody that's in your family is not, not going to rejoice with you. You're going to have the few that understand it because they understand how the anointing works. See, that's what people miss. And, and I, this is a sidebar of this message. The People don't realize how blessed they are because of you. Just your presence, Sister Harris, makes a difference in other people's lives. Because of your faithfulness to God. And, and see, if they could ever understand that, if they, if they could ever get a grip on it, their life will be much better. They will be much better off. And that's why scripture says rejoice with those who rejoice. See, what happened is you rejoice in the, 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 of the promises that God has placed in you, but they fail to realize. They, they, they should join in in your rejoicing because the same blessings that you get, they get, but in, that was in tailor made for them. See, people don't realize that. They, they want to, they rather hate you and, and talk about you and, instead of rejoice with you, instead of move with what God has in, in store for you. But see, the, the good thing about all that talking and all that downtrodden that they're doing, I can still stand up and say, but I'm still here by the grace of God. And see, when we get that inside of us, and when we get that, and it's not saying that I don't care what they say, but, but I don't care what they say, but, but what I do care about is that, 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 that they get an understanding of who God is for them also. Talk about me. Because it's positioning me for greater. As long as I walk out of it in the right manner. As I stay holy. As I stay truthful to God. And and here's another thing. This is the sad part. Even though they're family. They will never be your friend. They will never be your friend. They will turn around on everything that you say. And everything that you do. They will turn it around. (laughs) <laughs> if they can't if they can't say something good they'll start lying on you you know they'll leave out the part where you bless them they'll leave that part out where you shine favor on them but they'll start talking about you and all the things that 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 they are mad about because watch this is this is the key ladies and gentlemen if we get this in our spirit men and women of God they don't necessarily hate you they just hate the God and the favor that's upon your life. That's what they're hating. They, they, they wish that, that, that they had that favor. And instead of asking you, how did you get it? And, and how did you keep it? And how you move in it? They talk about you. They turn it all around. See, and what, what I want to understand is, the words that the words that we choose, the words that they choose that come out of your mouth, they're powerful. And, and see, the, the, I, I, let me go. Let me go to my police side of me for a second. You, you know, and you watch the movies, and and you watch the movies, and people say that that you don't. You got to have your Miranda rights met. You everybody heard about Miranda rights? So what, what happens is with these Miranda rights, if I come upon you in, as a police officer in a crime and you just start talking, I don't have to stop you from talking and re- read you your rights. Only time I have to stop you from talking and read you your rights is if I start questioning you. 
So if I start questioning you, now I have to read you your rights. And that's what the Miranda rights is. In other words, listen to me. When they start talking about you and they start doing all that, just close your mouth. Don't say nothing. Let's look what the Miranda right says. It says, number one, it says, you have the right to remain silent. See, when they talk about you, you don't even have to talk back to them. All I got to do is stay silent. Because the word of God says, the fight is not mine, but it's the Lord. So why am I going to go back and, and back and forth and, and argue with you and, and, and go back and forth? I, I don't need to go back and forth because I have the right to remain silent and, and let God fight my battles. Number two, it says, you have the right, I mean, I say, anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. So let's go back to the, the scripture where we was talking earlier where it says, be sober. So, look, and, and, and why, this is one of the reasons it says be sober-minded because anything you say can be used against you. So if you don't have that sober mind, if, if your mind is not right, if, if you're talking in anger and, and you just speak things out, then that can be held against you. That can, that can, that can determine your standing in Christ. People can use that against you in the court of law. Number three, you have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him or her present with you while you are being questioned. Holy Spirit, I need you right now, Father God, to be here with me as I go and talk to this, this individual that, that's attacking me, Lord God, that's attacking your word. I, I need you to shine favor on me as I talk, Lord. I need you to be the witness, Father God. Number four, if you can't uh, afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before any question, if you wish. So, uh, if you can't afford, and that's one thing about God is, I'm not charging for this. All you, all you have to do is ask me to come. To be received inside of you. Invite me in and, and watch this. It, it reminds me of the song where, where the lady was saying that I carried you for nine months. And I, I did this at, at no charge. Yeah, what, what's, this, what's that song? The little boy said, Mama, all the things that you want me to do, he put a price on what he wanted. For her, to do for his mama. He put a, a price on everything. But, but then she came back and said, for the nine months that I carried you, and I, and I, I whatever, whatever, whatever she said, and she said there was no charge. See, God is saying that it, there's no charge. He said, because watch this. Christ paid it all for us. So the price has been paid. And then it says, number five, it says, you can decide at any time to exercise these rights and not to answer any questions or make any statements. See, once again, it goes back to Christ. Christ made, he gave you all the answers. He, 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 he did everything for us already. So I don't need to make a statement. God, God you, did, you send your son to be a propitiation for everything that I'm going to go through. He answered the call, Father God. All I got to do is Make the, the statement uh, and make the choice to serve you, Father God. And then it says, and, and then the waiver, it says, after the warning, and in order to secure a waiver, the following questions should be asked and on a affiliated or affirmated or affirmed. Reply securely to each question. So here's the next question. It says, do you understand each of these rights that I have explained to you? And, and you can't nod your head and you can't just say, okay, you got to say, yes, I understand. So God is saying that, ladies and gentlemen, he's asking the question, do, do you want me as your Lord and Savior? It's not a nod said there. It's, I need a verbal yes, Lord. I, I need you as my Lord and Savior. And number two, it says, 
having these rights in mind, do you wish to talk to us now? God is saying, this. God is giving you a word. He said, do you need to talk to me? Do you, do you need to, to sit down and, and talk things out with me? He said, I'm your father, father. You can talk to me just like you talk to anybody else. He said, look, he said, because you don't need to miss out on your sleep. Have never broken down over someone that is in hell that you make and you look at. God is saying, listen, you don't need to miss no sleep. You don't miss, need to miss out on anything. I'm here for you. You don't need to go to hell. I'm here for you. Give everything over to me. Surrender it over to me. So what will happen to them? So his father, Joseph's father, put the coat of many colors on Joseph. And they see that when he, when he blessed him, anointed him, and favored him, opens doors. So let's look. We change that. When we see that he blesses you, your father, when he anoints you and when he favors you and he opens doors for you, makes ways for you out of nowhere because you understood your rights. You understood the waiver. You understood everything that, that God has for you. So watch this. It, all you got to do is Sometimes it's just shout favor. That's all it takes. Shout favor. Because anytime God steps over you to get to somebody else. Listen to him. When God steps over you to get to somebody else, it may make you nervous. But you understand the favor that's already over. So you, you say, go ahead, God. Go ahead, step over me, Lord. Bless that person, Lord, because you already blessed me, Lord. And I, I know when you bless them, you'll come back, Lord God, and shine some more favor on me. But see, you got, this is what it takes to be a real, mature child of God. To understand when God steps over you and blesses somebody else. You, all you saying, God, I trust you. I, I'm good, God. You bless me. You already shined your favor on me, God. Bless this person that's sitting next to me, God. So can, can we be that mature saint? Or are we going to be like getting mad when, when God blesses somebody and not bless you? Uh, are we going to get jealous uh, so, that they decide, so that we decide that we're going to get mad and we're going to get even with that person because God blessed them? They, they had nothing to do with God's blessing them, but they just put themselves in the right position. That's all it was. When you're truly blessed by God, when you are truly walking in the favor of God, some people really won't look at you. They turn their back on you. So watch what Joseph's brother said. They got so mad, they said, let's just get rid of him. Let, let's just put him in the pit. So they threw him in the pit. They lied on him. Dipped his coat in blood and said to him and sold him into slavery. Told the daddy that he was dead. All because of something that's called favor. Every, everywhere he went, he was hated because of his favor. But I'm here to tell you, I got good news for you. I got good news for you. I don't care how much folks hate you. It's only so much they can do. And when they do it, they ain't going to stop you. They can't take your coat. 
Oh, matter of fact, they can take your coat, but guess what? They can't take your favor. They can't take your favor. They can never, ever take your favor. And if we can get this into our spirit, if we can get that understanding, this is how you're going to come up. And this is how you're going to understand that God favored you because you stayed in the fight. You stayed there and you, you understood what it takes for God to favor you. Don't try to change them and don't fight with yourself. Just know that you have been set up for your step up in the favor of God. Give God some glory in this place. Give God the glory in this place. I thank God for his favor. Just realize that you're going to come out. Can we take it from the top of the mountain ministry? Can we take it from the top of the mountain ministry? Can we take it from the top of the mountain ministry? Now let me take it you ready, from the top Pastor Camel? Who want to go from the top of the mountain ministry? Who want to get the word? Who want to get their praise on? Can we take it from the top of the mountain ministry? Coming at you live.